Hello and welcome to my garden and the dinosaurs who live there. Well, Saturday the 18th of April and it's a pretty much glorious day. Bright sunshine, a little bit cool when you're not in direct sun and in the breeze, but other than that, it's pretty darned good. So I thought I'd take you round as I do some work in the garden and let you see what I'm up to. So I have over the past three or four weeks been very busy sowing potatoes and I use pots as you can see here and there's a whole variety of varieties, uh, Estima, um, Red Duke of York, Kestrel and I've now got some uh, Picasso that I'm going to, to put into pots now so I'm just going to show you how I do that. Uh, very quickly because I, I know that um, lots of folk are showing you their techniques uh, and in case you're wondering all these mad bits of wire here um, are just in there temporarily until the potato homes come up uh, to stop the chickens going in and dust bathing or just knocking all the compost out of the tubs so it doesn't look exactly uh, pretty um, but that's just the way of it <laughs> oh and it sounds like someone may have laid an egg. <laughs> so I usually use 30 litre tubs to plant my potatoes in. And generally what I will do is put a, a few inches, maybe four inches of compost in the bottom, mix in some sort of fertiliser, put my potatoes in and then top it up right to the top. And that's what I've done with all of these other potatoes that I've sown. Uh, but compost is sort of in hard uh, in, in short supply unless you want to um, order it online and wait an inordinate amount of time and pay a lot of money or um, as in the case I, I've done recently I ordered about just over a week ago some compost from B&Q one of our sort of DIY stores and I got to go and pick it up this morning but you know um, I think this year more than ever I'm being a bit more conscientious about reusing compost from around you know, old pots and other parts of the garden and so on <clears throat> so that I'm not relying so much on the new stuff <clears throat> so actually what I've got in the bottom here and I've never done this before is I've got some wood uh, wood chips or um, yeah wood chips and these were in the chicken run but they were sort of flicked out through the the mesh and sort of lived it around the the run rather than in the run so there's probably little bits of <clears throat> little bits of chicken poo in here but not a lot um, so what I thought I would do is use that as the basis I'll mix some compost in with that and I'll also mix the fertilizers in with that and that will give me the base for growing my potatoes into um, and I'll do that for the next few so um, Fertiliser wise, I've got some fish blood and bone. I'm just going to put a scoop of that in. And I've also got some chicken manure pellets, which, as my husband pointed out, isn't that a bit weird in that you've got lots of chickens and lots of chicken poo, but um, I don't have any uh, compost, chicken um, poo compost ready yet. And this is ready to, this pelleted stuff goes into the, the plants as is. So, um, I'll mix that in and I'll put some proper compost in. As well. And mix all of that with the wood chip. There we go. So that's my, my basis. And then I'm going to put in three potatoes, I think, uh, that have been chitting away. These are Picasso. These are a main crop potato. Um, there we go, there's the third one. 
and then I'm going to top this up with more compost and uh, again part of the way up the pot I am going to mix in some more fish blood and bone and chicken manure pellets. Now thinking about it, I do have some more wood chip left, so what I think I'll do is I'll top this off with some more of that um, wood chip that had been knocked out of the chicken run. Because what that will do, as well as having little bits of uh, chicken manure in it, um, but not too much they'll sort of burn the plants, um, it will give me almost like a mulch layer in the top of the pot. Uh, and stop the moisture being able to um, de uh, stop the, the soil being able to dehydrate as, as, as quickly as it would do if I didn't have a mulch on the top. So I shall do that. So I'll just go and get the, the rest of those wood chips. So I'm going to grow, uh, sow some beans and I'm going to try my uh, dwarf French beans again this year. I didn't have very much success last year with the beans at all um, and I'm going to try the burlotti beans again, the climbing bean. So I'm going to start them off in root trainers, just give them because I like a nice uh, deep root system. Um, so I'll, I've got some ordinary compost here, just some multi-purpose compost. I've mixed some vermiculite in with it. I hope you can see this. And I'm just going to fill up the root trainers. This is the messy bit. It's the only bit I don't like about having root trainers. This a bit of a fat to fill up, particularly if you don't want to spill out the compost everywhere. But uh, we'll see. Right. So, I mean, I use root trainers for sweet peas every year, and um, 
it works fine, it works well in fact. Uh, but I thought, did I use them last year for beans? I can't remember. Uh, but I'll use them this year to get the beans started off. I grow the beans in containers. So, um, yeah, so they'll go from here into uh, a container once the seedlings are big enough. So I think I'll just give that a little bit of water uh, just to settle it down. Then I'll put the beans in and then I will top the compost up. Okay, first off, let's get some bolotti beans in. How many have got? Two, four, six, seven. Four, seven is 28. So, 14 each, potentially, or maybe I'll do four off the bolotti and three off the French. We'll see. The bolotti beans look amazing, don't they? Great colour. Uh, right, so, one in each cell and I'll just push it well down. So that's Pelotti and French for the other three. Again very pretty beans. Slightly smaller. And the burlotti. That one's not so good. So I'll just top up and give them another little water and pop them in a, one of the grow houses and that should be me oh and label them of course so we have oops Berlotti and we're on the 18th of April Put a bit more compost in there and then we have Dwarf French. And the 18th of April. Lovely. Okay, the next thing I am going to plant is this cascading red begonia. So I've got to get a lot of flowers in hanging baskets because the chickens eat them otherwise. So I, I saw this a while ago, or these a while ago, and I thought it would be quite good to pop in hanging baskets. And you get these sort of corms, and you can see there's that was just starting to, to do something. And, um, the idea is that you just sit it more or less on the soil, I think I'm right in saying. Um, plant on the surface, two inches apart, cascading red begonia, and plant from April onwards. So, um, as usual, when you're planting in hanging baskets, be cognizant of the where the, um, the chain attaches to the basket so that you're not, your flower isn't going to bump into that. So I'll sort of plant so that things cascade in the gaps. This isn't the, the sort of sexiest of um, hanging baskets but hopefully when the begonia, begonias cascade over you won't see the, the sort of industrial nature of it really. So how many of these will I put in? Well look at that, that's definitely wanting to start. 
So maybe if I put... Oh, oh my goodness. Maybe I've left it a bit long. <laughs> I may as well get them all out. Uh, that one is the only one that doesn't appear to be doing much. And in here. So if I put these two together, at least that one is definitely showing signs of life. That one's showing signs of life, as is that and that one. So if I just sit it in, just a little indent if you like, put that one in the middle. These as well. I don't want them to be too deep. Oh. That'll be me knocking the camera over. Ooh. So, hello. Let's focus down there again. I hope we're looking at the right thing. I am a bit precarious here. Okay, so, yeah, so I'm just sort of nestling them in. And what will I do with these now? Because it is April, but it's still cold at night. What I think I'll do initially is um, have them outdoors during the day, unless it's really miserable and I will bring them back into the potting shed or one of the grow houses at night so that um, we don't risk these little guys getting frosted. Just mixing up some more compost with vermiculite so I can sow, <coughs> oh, excuse me, a bit dusty, sow some more begonias. I love putting uh, vermiculite through any compost that I use because it just lightens it, lets the air in, helps retain moisture and it's generally, I think it's just a, a more pleasant texture as well. So, now what I'm going to sow are these Fimbriata orange begonias and they look like that. Again, I've got five tubers and they just sit on the surface of the soil. Now these aren't trailing as far as I know so I'll start them off in pots and I will then um, put them into their final position once they are going well. Now look at this. <laughs> this I bought um, a busy Lizzie in. Now I think that indicates it was ages and ages ago. One, it was £1.48 but two they stopped selling busy lizzies for ages and ages because of the what disease was it they got? I can't remember. Someone could maybe remind us. Um, but yeah, busy lizzies just became a, a known entity in, in garden centres and nurseries because they had a a disease that just sort of wiped them out. Really, um, they started coming back in. I don't know whether we called them busy lizzies or called them impatiens, um, and and we sort of get them again now. But um, this was, this must be years ago. But that's quite good because obviously I'm, I'm reusing and <laughs> uh, even though the plastic pots I am reusing them. So that's good. So I will fill up the pots and in fact, let me just show you what these, these look like. Here we go, a little quart. Is it a tuber? Is it a corn? A tuber, probably. Um, and there you can see this one started. So before I put them in though, I'll fill the pots up and I'll dampen the compost and then I'll pop the, uh, the begonias on top. So for each of them, I will just nestle it down. Oh, look at that! Woohoo! So that the the it makes contact with the damp compost, and the roots can start. I mean, there's no the roots there. Um, they're needing to get moist and start reaching down. There's another one that's looking like it's ready to. Start. There we go. 
I'll label these and I will pop them in the potting shed or the grow house just to establish themselves. It'll probably be May time before I, I bring them out into the big bad world. Maybe bring them out uh, during the day a little bit if it's nice weather and then pop them back at night.